everybody and welcome to another edition of Taking the Lead. I'm Lisa LaRocca. You're about to meet a woman who was born into a football dynasty. Now imagine being one of 11 siblings in the family business. That's about as male dominated as you can get. So how do you find your voice and take the lead? I'll give you a little hint about the team. Thanks to these guys, Tom Brady has a few less Super Bowl rings. The New York Football Giants, one of the most storied teams in the history of the National Football League. Y.A. Tittle, Frank Gifford, Lawrence Taylor, Eli Manning, just a few of the legendary names to wear the team's uniform. But without the Mara family, there just might not be a big blue. In 1925, Tim Mara purchased the team for a mere $500. Today, the franchise is worth an estimated $3.2 billion. In 1959, the reins were handed to son Wellington Mara. And while running the Giants organization, Wellington and his wife Anne raised their 11 children in Westchester County. Go Big Blue, go Giants! I'm Anne Marica Case, I'm number nine. I'm a mom of three and I'm part of the Giants family. Anne was born ninth in what she says is a very close-knit family of seven girls and four boys. They grew up in White Plains, later moving to Rye. We never had to have a play date, <laughs> um, but it was great. We had our own little football team. Laying the groundwork for the third generation of the Mara family to strengthen a football dynasty. <laughs> Just weeks before the coronavirus pandemic broke out, we met up with Anne at the Quest Diagnostic Training Center in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the practice facility for the New York Giants. Anne says, growing up, Giants football was a major part of family life. Touchdown, New York! And it is to this day. Older brother John Mara serves as president, CEO, and co-owner of the team, alongside chairman, co-owner, and executive vice president Stephen Tisch. All 11 Mara siblings, including Anne, share equal ownership of the team. And we grew up in a football field, and we grew up in the NFL. We started our day like on a Sunday, where we all went to church in the morning, came home, and my father would have a huge breakfast, and he would leave like three or four hours before the game by himself. And then my mom and us kids would go with her. And then we came out to Giant Stadium and we watched football. And you always knew what kind of Monday you were gonna have, whether the Giants won or lose. <laughs> it's kinda that way in my house too. <laughs> As preparations for the 2020 football season were about to kick off, the coronavirus pandemic blindsided us all. Fans watched as NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell led a virtual draft from the basement of his Bronxville home. And in the wake of the virus, the Giants organization, like all teams, have had to make many adjustments to their facilities, as well as how they practice to keep players and staff safe. In addition, there have been some big changes for the G-Men. There's new head coach Joe Judge and his coaching staff, some creative picks during the draft, and perhaps the biggest change. Wellington Mara always said, once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. After 16 years as Big Blue's star quarterback, Eli Manning retired last season, giving Daniel Jones sole possession of the ball. And says everyone is rising up to meet the challenges. You know, our players are at the stadium, with the coaches. I think all of them, they're all stepping up, it seems like right now. In addition to being a Giants owner, Anne and her husband, Tim Kikase, along with celebrity chef, Rafael Ronca, opened the popular restaurant, Rafael Rye, two years ago in Rye. The partners say the early days of the pandemic were filled with uncertainty. Gotten a lot stronger since then. <laughs> Both Tim and chef Rafael talked about closing. But it was Anne who took the lead and insisted they stay open. Anne says during those first three months, they kept things running with about six people. I'm not a good cook, but I had to learn how to make pizzas <laughs> very quickly. And when the partners saw a need within the community, they began delivering dinners to the staff at White Plains Hospital up to three times a week. And it was like we were in the war. There was like a hundred, I get so upset when I think about this, 
hundred ambulances and people on gurneys and stuff and the workers and the workers and they were in those hazmat suits and I'm telling you it looked like we were in war that's what they were all on the sidewalks and people working on one another. The three also had to work quickly to change the restaurant to meet new safety guidelines. That meant 50% capacity inside. So they added a few tables out front and in about a day built this garden dining patio out back. And says it's been a tough storm to weather, but between the strength of the restaurant staff, the community and her upbringing, she knew they'd pull through. I knew we were gonna make it because we're all so strong. We have a strong team here, and this is a small community. And I've lived here all my life, so I knew people were gonna come back. Anne is named after her mother, who she calls one of her biggest role models. Anne T. Mara was the strong matriarch of 11 children, 44 grandchildren, including actresses Kate and Rooney Mara, and more than two dozen great-grandchildren. Known as the first lady of football, she had a reputation for being a real spitfire. She famously took on beloved Hall of Fame quarterback Terry Bradshaw on live television after the Giants had beaten the San Francisco 49ers in the 2012 NFC Championship game. I know, I'm tired. I'm sorry, I'm getting hammered for not picking the Giants. I will never forget that because we were all in there with her and um, I think it was Brandon Jacobs who picked her up and, and um, put her on the stage. You never knew what was gonna come out of my mom's mouth. She just said it the way it was. The New York Giants hold four Super Bowl titles, but perhaps the most memorable was in 2008. Big Blue delivered one of the greatest upsets in Super Bowl history by defying the odds and beating Tom Brady and the undefeated New England Patriots. After the game, Mrs. Mara walked on to the Patriots bus to speak with tough head coach Bill Belichick, who once served as the Giants defensive coordinator. He was sitting on the bus, and all of a sudden my mother walks away from my sisters and I, and we're like, where is she going? She gets on the Patriots bus, but she was, she was very polite. She said, good game, you know. And he got up and said, Mrs. Mara, you know, great game, congratulations. And, but you never knew. We all stood outside saying, oh God, what is she saying in there? The Mara family plays a huge role in the history of football. Anne's father, Wellington, was nicknamed the Duke. The NFL football is named the Duke in his honor. Dad obviously wanted to win. They both were so old school and they just wanted to make an environment, a happy environment for their staff. Ann says growing up in this family makes for some interesting stories, like the time legendary Hall of Fame coach Vince Lombardi, the guy the Super Bowl trophy is named after, also godfather to one of Ann's older brothers, came to stay at their house. My mom was very, very good friends with Vince Lombardi's wife, um, and they were all married at the same time, and actually Vince Lombardi slept on my father's couch. He said he wanted to sleep there for one night. He had gotten a, an argument with his wife. And my mother said, okay, if it's just one night, I think he was there like two weeks. My mom was like, is he ever going to leave? Anne admits owning a professional football team certainly has its perks, but it's not a glamorous hobby as some may think. In reality, she says it's a tough year-round business that takes a great deal of hard work. Anne says her parents tried to instill a strong work ethic in all 11 children who were raised in a strict Catholic household. She says everyone understood spoiled bad behavior was simply not tolerated. And she credits her upbringing to who she and her siblings are today. My father used to say to us, to whom much is given, much is required. My parents were definitely my heroes. Um, and my mom was a leader, my father was a leader. I think because they showed us by example every day on respecting life and being kind and how kindness can make such a difference in someone's life. My mom always used to, and, well, and my dad, always used to say to us, don't be a follower, be a leader. Don't be a watcher or count what everybody else has. You have to be happy with what you have and then you won't have any problems in life. Witnessing a champ in the making, fueled by your passion for greatness. Yeah. Ann says while she, of course, is a proud owner of the New York Giants and supports her team, she didn't want to go into the family business 
although she and her siblings continue to carry on her late parents' charities. Plus, Anne says having Mara for a last name doesn't guarantee a job with the Giants organization. She says her father created the rule years ago that continues to this day. If you want to work here, you have to earn the spot just like anyone else. If you're interested in something, you know, being a scout or whatever, you have to go out six or seven years and prove yourself. And then if there's an opening in that department, you have to interview whoever is the head of that department. And I think it's a good rule because there is so many of us. And with so many as equal owners, Anne and her 10 siblings have meetings about the family business. John just goes over you know, the year and stuff like that. Just wants to keep everybody on page. It's kind of nice to have all 11 of us there. And then he always asks if anyone has any concerns or anything, but we do talk about what charities and what we have to do. When he says concerns, do you also say, all right, listen, there's a player you need to look at and we need to get him on our team. It depends <laughs> if we've won the Sunday before or not. We always know what to say. <laughs> so if we're coming, if you're, there's a family meeting and we're coming off of a, of a, a loss, Tiptoe oh, around. Tiptoe. I keep my I try to keep my mouth shut. Still ahead. I grew up around like First Street and Johnson Street, which is a pretty dangerous part of uh, Newburgh. This school actually saved me. How Anne keeps her mother's legacy alive by taking the lead at a Hudson Valley school for at-risk boys. So much of the Mara family legacy is of course tied to the New York Giants, but a lot of Anne's work is done off the field and far from the spotlight. Now we're going to join her at a special school in Orange County where Anne really is taking the lead. Growing up, I lived in Bancar Avenue, which is considered to be one of the worst streets in Newburgh. There's always drug activity, gang activity there, and it was just, you know, it was really dangerous. My mom's car actually got shot once, which was pretty crazy. And the thing about living here is that it kind of becomes normal. The city of Newburgh is located in Orange County along the majestic Hudson River. It also ranks as one of America's most dangerous cities where crime and poverty are widespread. A 2011 New York Magazine article called Newburgh the murder capital of New York. But there have been efforts to make changes to the community where one out of every three people lives in poverty. One place that has become a beacon of hope is the San Miguel Academy, a tuition-free, faith-based middle school for at-risk boys. Executive Director Father Mark Connell says students attend the school from 5th through 8th grade. Small class size, extended school days, and extended school year with a summer program are some of the key components to the curriculum. The mission is, is simple. It's uh, we want to break the cycle of poverty through education. So when you see a San Miguel student, you're looking at a first generation learner. I don't like to be the center of attention. I'm the quiet one in the corner, and I'm happy being like that. But all that changed several years ago. Sitting in the Anne Mara Center for Child and Family Services, named in her mother's honor, Anne gets emotional, reminiscing about how her family got involved with the school. She says after her father's death, a family friend brought her mother to the school to try and lift her spirits. And each time she came up here, when she would come home, her smile just grew. She said, no, Amory, it is a special place. There's just something about that place. When Anne came here um, and, and when she met the kids and saw the city, she got it right away. And, you know, she was sold on it for life. You have Anne Mara on your team you're doing okay. Mrs. Mara became very involved with the school until her death in 2015. She passed away just weeks after she'd been with the boys for a visit. 
but the special bond between the students and staff of San Miguel and the Mara family was now firmly in play. We were all mourning her loss. Uh, the boys were, were at her funeral in New York City. Um, and then we had no idea uh, what would happen next. Wellington and Ann were such special people and they brought up these 11 great human beings, right? And they knew what this meant to their mother and Ann seemed to step out of the crowd. Losing her mother was extremely difficult and in her grief, Ann went to visit the school. And as soon as I got here, I saw what my mom had seen that day. And I was like, you know what? This school actually saved me yeah. during a very tough time. So when I came here, I was just like, you know what? Put on the big girl panties. This is what you're going to do, and this is going to make your parents proud. And that's when Ann says she truly found her voice. She decided to take the lead by carrying on her mother's legacy at San Miguel. She joined the school's board and began coordinating fundraisers. She arranged for students to attend Giants games at MetLife Stadium and visit training camp where the boys meet superstar players, some who grew up in communities just like Newburgh. And also got brother John involved by donating extra Giants equipment to the boys and their families. Her three children also volunteer. And there are visits to Raphael Rye. For many of these boys, it's their first time in a nice restaurant. The program is working. Luis Jimenez currently attends Maritime College and plans to become a Navy pilot. The Sadabs attends a private high school in Connecticut. They say the guidance of Father Mark and his staff and the help provided by Anne and others like her has truly made a difference. And I was surprised, I was like, oh, you know, someone as cool as her remem remembers my name, like, it's, it just, you know, doesn't happen to me a lot. And from then on, you know, she was, she's like a second mom to me. Yeah, maybe the person I am today, maybe realize that, you know, I have the potential to be a leader. Once you get here, you realize everybody is here for you and to help you, so the trust and the bond that you make is so important. Life is giving you an opportunity seize it and then come back here and help your people. Gee, the next generation. This city doesn't have to be poor. In the fall of 2019, Anne was honored for her work at San Miguel's annual fundraising dinner, which with her help brought in record donations. That's former New York Giants left tackle David Deal presenting the award. And now that she'd found her voice, the quiet Mara sibling was able to stand up and speak in front of 450 people. I feel like I won my own Super Bowl. I've taken the baton and now I'm running with it. I'm not stopping. I've got to keep going. All right, coming up next, Anne and I are going to reenact one of the most iconic, amazing plays in New York Giants Super Bowl history. You do not want to miss this. Stick around. You ready? I am ready. All right. Eli comes up with here. Downfield, wide open, he's got him again! Manning to Slayton! As a diehard Big Blue fan, I just couldn't let Ann leave without talking about Super Bowl 42. In February of 2008, the Giants were up against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots who went into the game undefeated. The Giants were not given a right. chance. I think we went to church three times that day. <laughs> well, I have something here that I, my dad gave me. Um, it's a rosary bead. I always have this with me. You're in the owner's box doing novenas. And saying novenas and, with my rosary beads. That's why we won. That and the helmet catch, of course. The helmet catch, the now legendary and improbable play that led to one of the greatest upsets in sports history. So with Ann in the role of wide receiver David Tyree and me as quarterback Eli Manning, we decided to have some fun and recreate that magical moment. He breaks through, they're pulling on him and he rolls out 
launches to David Tyree, and there's the catch! Then with 39 seconds left, Eli Manning connects with Plexico Burris for a touchdown. G-Man win it 17-14. And that is the game right there, right? <laughs> That's the game. Oh, was that the best the moment best. ever? There we go. There's not a better feeling than winning a Super Bowl. You witnessing a champ in the making, fueled by your passion for greatness. Yeah, but adversity in bad situations meet us in the middle of the path. And that finishes up another edition of Taking the Lead. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed being here. This was absolutely amazing. We're at the Giants practice facility in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Lisa LaRocca, News 12. Go Giants!